Great evening, everyone. Great evening, everyone. It is good to see you all in the house of the Lord on tonight. Welcome to our church on Wednesday. If you are watching us online via Facebook, would you hit the share button and share the gospel all over your social media timeline? If you're watching on YouTube, copy that link, send it to somebody, email it, text it, whatever you have to do. Let them know that Capital City is having their church on Wednesdays. You don't want to miss tonight. What a blessing. We hope and pray it will be. Would you come? Would you, would you all pray with me as we go before the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we cannot make it without you. And Father in heaven, we're just thankful and grateful, Lord, that you've brought us to this midpoint, Lord, of the week, this oasis, Lord Jesus. And Father in heaven, we pray, Lord Jesus, that we can hear a word on tonight, Lord Jesus. We pray that we can sing songs of praise to you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father in heaven, that you will hear and answer our prayers on tonight. And so bless us, Lord Jesus, in the way and manner which only you can. And we'll be certain and sure to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In your name, Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you all for praying with us. God bless you. And now as our praise team will come forth and bring us in song. And then after that, we'll come back uh, for our prayer on tonight. Our prayer, we're going to pray for our children our children on tonight and so if you have children if you have grandchildren nieces nephews whomever it may be you can drop their names in the chat and so we can make sure that we pray over their name individually
of my favorite songs, Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy to be praised. Amen, amen, amen. It is nothing but the Lord that led y'all to sing that song on tonight. Um, you'll understand why when we begin to go into our uh, preaching, teaching session. But it is now time for prayer, amen? Amen? Amen. 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 How many know we can call on God at any time? And he does not send us to voicemail. He does not hang up the phone on us. He always is willing to pick up and hear and answer our prayers. And it may not be in the way that we would like him to, but he always hears and answers our prayers according to his will and according to his way. Amen? Amen. Well, tonight, our, fam our emphasis on tonight is we are praying for our children. Our children. If you are our children and our youth, our young adults, if you have children, if you have grandchildren, no matter what age that they are, um, they can be 40, 50 years old, but they still mama's baby. They still daddy's baby boy or baby girl. And so on tonight, we are lifting up our children, our young adults in prayer. And so if you have some, um, was, as we are praying, you may utter them out loud. Um, if you're watching online, you can drop them in the chats as we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen? And we'll be lifting up other prayers as well before the Lord. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we count it as an honor and a privilege to be able to come before you, Lord, in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, on bended knees humble, Lord, the only way we know how, asking forgiveness of our sins, of our transgressions, of our iniquities, those things, Lord, that we have done, Lord, that were displeasing before you. Father in heaven, we ask forgiveness, Lord, that we don't want anything standing in between us getting closer to you. We don't want any unconfessed sin in our heart that may stop our prayer from being answered. And so, Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you, Lord, on tonight, lifting up, Lord, our children. Father in heaven, our sons and our daughters and nieces and nephews and grandchildren and, and cousins and all of our children, Lord Jesus. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, as they go to school, Lord Jesus, that you will keep those classrooms safe havens. That, Father in heaven, Lord, you will keep angels encamped around those schoolhouses and those universities and those colleges, Lord Jesus that Father in heaven, you will keep angels camped around about it, that no harm or danger will come upon them, Lord, as they enter into classrooms. Let their minds and their hearts be like sponges, absorbing all good that you have for them, Lord Jesus. And Father in heaven, we pray, Lord Jesus, that even when they leave the schools, when they leave the universities, bless them, Lord, to return back to their home safely, Lord Jesus. Give them safe traveling mercies. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for those, Lord Jesus, uh, no matter what level of education that they are in, that, Father in heaven, you will remove the stress away from them, Lord, of schoolwork, Lord Jesus, that, Father in heaven, you will allow them to not give in to peer pressure, Lord Jesus, that, Father in heaven, they will listen to your still, small voice. That, Father in heaven, Lord, they, are, they will know that they are able to call upon you and Father in heaven, you will hear and answer their prayer. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless them, Lord, to be children, Lord, learning and growing, Lord Jesus, in the fear of you, because they will be raised by parents, grandparents, family members, Lord, and even uh, mentors, Lord Jesus, teachers, that will give them the guidance, the instruction that they need, Lord Jesus, to prepare them, Lord, for not just life, but, but to prepare them for your soon return. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for every name, Lord Jesus, that is uttered upon lips on tonight, Father in heaven. We pray for every name that has been dropped in the comments on tonight, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father in heaven, that these are your sheep, that Father in heaven, Lord, you will be the master shepherd, 
that, Father in heaven, they are protected by you, Lord Jesus, that you will keep them, Lord, in your hedge of protection, and that, Father in heaven, Lord, no harm, no danger will come upon them, that, Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, over their health and strength, that, Father in heaven, anything, Lord, that is in their body that should not be there, that, Father, you will remove it, Lord Jesus, and, Father in heaven, they will be in good health, and they will prosper, Lord Jesus, as you see fit. We pray, Father in heaven, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, gathered here in the sanctuary, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to touch them and bless them, Lord, in a special way. That, Father in heaven, whatever they stand in need of, Lord, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's mental, whether it's spiritual, Lord Jesus, whatever, Lord, they stand in need of, we pray, Lord, according to your will and according to your way, please, Lord, hear and answer your pr our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that is watching online right now that are praying with us, Lord Jesus, that whatever their prayer request is, you said in your word, Lord, that before we even open our lips, you already know what we stand in need of. And so, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that even, Lord, you bless our needs and you are gracious enough sometimes, Father, to even bless our wants. And so, Father in heaven, we give it all to you. Whatever we stand in need of, we lay it on the altar and we say, Lord, we cannot, but Lord, you can. And we know, Lord Jesus, that we can do all things through you who strengthens us. And so, Father in heaven, we pray, Lord, that you will hear and answer our prayers, not according to the way we want them answered, but according to your will and according to your way. Continue, Lord, to bless and hear our prayers, even after we've said amen. For is it, in, is it, it is in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you and we love you and we praise you in advance. In your name, Jesus, we pray and thank you. We say together, amen, amen, and amen again. Amen, 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 amen. We're gonna continue to, if you have placed prayer requests in the, in the comment section, prayerfully before the night is over, we will be lifting up those prayers. And if you are here on tonight, and you say, Pastor, I have a prayer request. Just catch me at the door or send me a text message so we can lift that prayer request up before the Lord. Amen? I don't have a special hotline to the Lord or, or a special phone number. I call on him just like you do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God for our praise team who blessed us on tonight. Amen. Give, give God uh, for them on tonight. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm thankful. They, they only, only thing they did on tonight was they just kind of started the car up. You know, they didn't, they didn't even hit the gas. You didn't even hear full throttle. They was just giving you a little sample. You know, when you go to the store, you get a sample. Praise God for Bishop Dane with us on tonight. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as we prepare to go into the word on tonight. Gracious, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, in this moment you speak to us. Bless us, Lord Jesus, to hear a word from you and to learn from your word. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles or your smart devices, I hope you do, we're going to the book of Hebrews on tonight. Where are we going? The book of Hebrews on tonight, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the, excuse me, Hebrews, the first chapter. I'm sorry. Hebrews, the first chapter. I'm in the 11th chapter. Let me get to where I'm supposed to be. I done drove down the street too far. Let me back up. Let me back up and hit your house. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1. Hope you have your Bibles, your smart devices. Hebrews chapter 1. And we're going to read extensive on tonight. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I'm reading from the King James Version. Whatever version you have, you can just follow along with us. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I feel like, actually, now we're ready on the capital side and the city side, but I won't do that tonight. They said ready. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. Let's all read together. Would you read with me if you are able? God, who had and in divers' manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Stop right there. Now, last week, you may remember that we covered three books that begin with God. Three books and only three books in the, in the entire Bible that begin with God. Who can give me one of them? One book, Genesis. I heard you, Genesis. In, uh, what does Genesis say? In the beginning, what? God. Okay, what was this, what's another one? 
Hebrews, Hebrews, God who at sundry times. Now give me the third one. It's very easy. And the God, huh? John, John, Mo, look at Mo. Come on, Mo. In the beginning was the, and the word was three books that start off with God. Let's continue reading. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So if anybody was to ever ask you, where is Jesus right now? You can let them know he's seated on the, of the majesty of the Father on high. Verse number four, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten in the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God do what? Verse number seven, and the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is for ah, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Y'all getting excited. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Verse number 10, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has what? And the heavens are the work of they shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art, and thy years shall not. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Verse 14, in conclusion, it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? who shall be heirs of salvation. Amen. Say amen for the reading of the word on tonight. You all read so good on tonight. Amen. Amen. Elder Justin, are you still trying to get there? Okay. 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 No, I see you have an Android device. So I was trying to make sure. I, I see you had an Android device. Each year at Christmas time, I know it's not Christmas time, but that is one of the favorite times of the year when you particularly like to get into the Christmas spirit. What, so, what are some of the songs, the Christmas songs that you like? Who, huh? Christmas time is here. Chestnuts roasting on open fire. Silent night. Oh, holy night. Hark the herald angels. This Christmas, this Christmas. Is that in the hymnal? Okay. okay. This, this. This Christmas, dun, 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 dun. you know, I, I don't know anything about that. Yes, joy to the world, joy to the world, joy to the world. Go tell it on the mountain. I like Christmas songs. I like all hymns, and I like the 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 Santa Claus go straight to the ghetto. I like Christmas songs, y'all. Man, but I but I particularly like in our in our uh, in our hymnal number one forty one. What child is this? It's not necessarily the song, but the title right away grabbed my attention, Sister Denise. What child is this? In the book of Hebrews, chapter one, that you all read so uh, uh, good on tonight, it defines and describes and gives details to who this child really is. So if you really want to find out more, more about this him mo or who this child is, if you go to Hebrews chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 4 that we read, 1 through 4 paint a portrait of him in the New Testament. And then chapter, same chapter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 14 paint corresponding pictures of him from the Old Testament. And so if listen for each claim about Jesus in Hebrews chapter one, verses one through four, Sister Sherry, there is a corresponding Old Testament quote to support the claim in Hebrews chapter one, verses five through 14. 
So tonight, I want you to know this, that when it comes to Jesus, when you know him, you have to know about him if you're going to worship him. It does no good to worship him and serve him and claim that you love him if you don't know anything about him. So on tonight, I want you to understand his exaltation. He should be exalted. He should be lifted up. Um, Sister Blue, do you know that he belongs exalted? Sister Blue, thank you for coming out on tonight. I know this is normally your bedtime, but I, I, I appreciate seeing your smiling face on tonight. See, you can't treat Jesus just like he's ordinary. The, uh, uh, the Muslims don't consider him the son of God. They don't even consider him uh, uh, a part of the Godhead. They don't even consider him from heaven. They just believe he was a great prophet, one of the greatest prophets, they'll tell you. But you can't treat Jesus like he's just some ordinary man. He is to be exalted. And Alex, he is heir not of some things, but he's heir of all things. And then not only is he one of exaltation, but he's also creator. He's also creator. Um, um, if we can, can we get those slides working? He's also creator. You know you are, are awesome when you create the world and you live in the world that you created and you created the mama that you was born through. So to say that Jesus is only when he began on earth is a horrible misnomer. Elder Nicole, that's why you need to know who him is so that when you read the Bible, when you study the Bible, when you talk to somebody, Sister Core, you understand who him is because he is from everlasting to everlasting. So when you say, hold up, Pastor Clark, then how can that be? How can that be possible? Watch this next thing. He is creator and he's also sustainer. He's also sustained. You see, the reason why, Brother Bird, that we can exist in a solar system filled with meteors and asteroids coming and going and gases that could potentially kill us, uh, did you not know that if we were about four times the moon's distance from Earth, from the, from the sun, that this, this place called Earth would be uninhabitable? But because he is a sustainer, he keeps us just close enough for the sun. I'm talking about not that son. I'm talking about the S-O-N son. He keeps us just enough to give us what you need. Why? Because he is a sustainer. But the reason why you're still alive is because he upholds all things. Um, Sister Beeman, in other words, he doesn't just hold you together. He holds everything together. I used to love the song. He's got the whole world in his, in his hands. Y'all went to the same little church I went to. Not only do we see exaltation, exalter, creator, and sustainer, but we see the exalted Savior. Write that down, exalted Savior. I hope you all wrote these down. Elder Justice, did you write these down? Exalter, creator, sustainer, Savior. I ain't picking on Elder Justice. Just, that's, my, that's my girl. Now listen, what makes Jesus the son of God is that he is the exalted one. Sister Debbie, I don't know why it is, but people around America who are atheists and agnostics and other, other belief systems often target Christians negatively. Dr. Wilmot and Christians who don't know no better follow them. We're the only people that make jokes about the belief system we have and then try to get other people to believe in the very same system that we talked about. We talk about our own church and then invite folks to become a part of our church that we just talked about. And the perpetual plaguing problem is our God is not ordinary in any sense of the word. Our God, ladies and gentlemen, is exalted. Everybody say exalted. exalted. Verse number five, he says, you are my son. It says, I have begotten you. You are mine. And because of that, you have a sonship. A sonship that says you are not like any other. Now, I want to teach you this. I want to make sure you get this before we run out of time. There are three aspects of the sonship of Jesus. How many? Three, three aspects of the sonship. How many? Three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but I'm not talking about that. But there are three aspects of Jesus, of the sonship of Jesus. Number one, here's the first one. There is the aspect of the son of an, an eternity past. Three aspects of the sonship of Jesus Christ, eternity past. Y'all ready? This is going to be deep. I want you to get this. He was here 
before we got here. <laughs> Jesus is so magnificent that he created the earth that he walked on. And when you understand who him is, it will make your worship of him just that much better. Because him was here when the earth got started. He was with the Father. When the Father said, let there be light, and all of a sudden, light came tiptoeing out of darkness like a ballerina with no slippers on, he was right there. How do you know that, Pastor Clark? He was there. Because Genesis 1.26 says, let us us make man in our image i'm not that bright but us and our normally means more than one person genesis 3 22 says and the lord god said behold the man has become as one of of us before adam and eve oh come on let's advance that advance that one more one more alice one more stay with me Okay, good, good, good. Before Adam and Eve, before Adam fell in the garden and the Lord God came walking through the garden in the cool of the day, who do you think that was that came down to see him? Jesus. Who do you think that was walking through the garden? It was the Lord. I'm going to give you this for free. I'm not going to charge y'all for this. But whenever you're reading, especially in the King James Version, when you see the Lord God, that is talking about Jesus is speaking. You'll see in cap letters, Lord God, this is Jesus speaking. Then you'll see God by himself. This is the Father. But when you see Lord God in caps, this is Jesus speaking. Are we still together? Good. So you see right there, and the Lord God said, behold, the man has become of us. Who's speaking? This is Jesus, but it's not just Jesus. It is the Father, Son, and... Oh, y'all go to Capital City. What church y'all go to? These portraits, ladies and gentlemen, are of his sonship in the past. So his sonship in the past says he was there all the time. Nina, he was the one that told Gideon, when you get to Midian, you can't take all them folks with you. You got too many people with you. Uh, 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 you got too many. You got 30,000, but you got me on your side. So since you got me on your side, I'm going to take more than all half of them, and I'm just going to give you 300, Sister Purnell, and you really don't even need that. All you need is me when God is on your side. He is the common factor. He was the one, ladies and gentlemen, that showed up in a fiery furnace. Y'all remember that story, don't you? you? You know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and... Somebody said a bad Negro, Hananiah, Mishael, I wanted one of y'all to say it, I didn't want to say it. Three Hebrew boys in captivity in Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. They're in captivity, they can't get loose. The Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar builds this large statue and issues a decree that everybody had to bow down when the music played. And when the music played, those three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow down. Somebody snitched on them and told the king. I, wanted, I, I would always like to know if you was bowing down, how you see us standing up so somebody went to the king and said hey king hey king them jokers didn't bow down and the king said bring them here come on y'all I like y'all y'all good boys I like y'all uh, uh, I'm gonna give y'all another chance because I like y'all so I want this is what I want y'all to do when the music play y'all bow down they said nah king you ain't got to do that we don't get down like that you ain't got to play the song again um, if it be so our God who is able to deliver us from the fire but if not, I wish I had time to spend on that butt right there. Uh, um, um, but we not bowing down to no idol. So now the king gets mad, orders them to be thrown in the fire, Elder Nicole. Watch the Lord get the glory out of this to show everybody out there and us that the fire was indeed hot. It was heated up seven times hotter. And the men who bound them, when they got ready to open up the door, them jokers got burned up too. So that goes to show you, it was a hot fire. They bound them up, wrapped them up, head, uh, hats on their head, wrapped them up, bound them up, throw them in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're thrown in the fire. And after a minute, I like this part, I get excited about this. The king looked in there and said, one, two, three, four. I'm sure the king said, I'm not a mathematician, but... Didn't we throw three of them in there? They said, yeah, king. He said, because I see four. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. His sonship and eternity passed. This, ladies and gentlemen, 
This is from Genesis to Malachi. If you study this in modern scholarship, Brother Bird, the, they call these the pre-incarnate portraits of Christ, the pre-incarnate portraits of Christ, because he was here from the beginning. And truth of the matter is, y'all, he was here before the beginning. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Bible says in Psalms 90, verse no, number two says what? Psalms 90, verse number two says, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from to everlasting, thou art God. Look at this, John chapter 8, verses number 58. Jesus is having a back and forth with the Pharisees, and they say, you can't be older than our father Abraham. And I, like Jesus, I love Jesus. Jesus says, wait, hold tight. Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. It's a very perplexing statement, Mo, to a student who hasn't studied this. So what Jesus is saying, I am the reason why Abraham is here in the first place. It's his sonship in eternity past. I hope you're watching online. Here's the next one. Then there is sonship of time in the present. Sonship of time in the present. If this is interesting, Elder Justice, I want you to catch this. His sonship in the present extends itself from his birth to the cross and then from the cross to his present throne. Says so Pernell, are we still together? And he's a son in this particular piece. He was born where, y'all? Huh? Somebody says you and they got, they got nervous. He was born where? Bethlehem. Now say this with me. Bethlehem. Oh, y'all love your Hebrew. Bethlehem it means house of bread. Jesus said, I am the, the bread of life. Ain't that something? He's the bread of life, and yet they could not find room in the inn for the bread of life. So he's born in Bethlehem. What part of his sonship is this? Say this, in time and to the throne. So when you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, you read, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you read the historic accounts on, of his sonship in time towards the throne all the way. So when the son was on earth, he was heaven wrapped in a body. Everything heaven had to offer earth wrapped itself in flesh. So Nyla, you have to ask yourself the critical question. Why would God become one of us? Go, she finna go. She, she went and asked mom, how come God became one of us? Listen to this. The reason why God became, becomes one of us is because none of us can pay the price needed for all of us. So what he does is he says since the beginning of time, since you can't pick up the tab that you can't pick up, and the only standard, wait, 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 wait. Who can meet God's standard? Nobody but him, thank you. The answer is that it takes God to meet his own before the foundations of the world, it says. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9, and the New King James Version says this, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to his works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So here is, what he does in his sonship. Come on, Alice, work with me. He becomes one of us. The Lord himself came here to share it and learn how to walk and talk. The Lord learned how to shiver in my cold and sweat in my heat. The Lord decided I'll become one of you so you can become like me. The Bible says he was tempted in all ways. He becomes one of us. What is it called? Sonship. Say that with me, sonship. Since the great eternity past, Genesis to Malachi. It's eternity present from the birth to the cross to the throne. So if I say, where is God seated at? You will say where? Where is Jesus seated at? He's seated where? On the right hand of the Father. Take me to the scripture that says that. 
Okay, if you can't find that one, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22 says what? He, who is gone into heaven and is on what? Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. You read something like that when you read Hebrew chapter 1, didn't you? It said he was on where? The right hand of the Father. Third one of his sonship. Here's the third one. He is a son of eternity forever. This is where we learn, brothers and sisters, that his reign will last forever. Jesus doesn't have terms of limits. He does not have to be voted back in. He does not have to have a board, a special council meeting. They don't have to make special provisions for him. He is, his reign will last, how long? Forever. How long is forever? Forever, forever, ever, and ever, ever. <laughs> Three aspects of his sonship, past, present, and forever. Colossians chapter 1, the reason I want to do this is because the Bible is its own best interpreter. I need you to know that. By that I mean if the Bible affirms something in one place, it confirms it in another place. So let me show you. I want to take you here. Let me show you this right quick. This same portrait of Jesus in another book of the Bible. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. When you're there, say amen. Amen. We'll give you, those of you with Android devices a second to get there. Go ahead, pull it up. Go ahead, pull it up. Praise God for the Apple devices. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, it says what? And whom we have through his, even the forgiveness, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So Paul says, when you want to see what Jesus looks like, when you want to know what God looks like, excuse me, when you want to know what God looks like, you see Jesus. We, 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 we see images. If you want to know what Abraham Lincoln looks like, you look at his image on a what? On a penny, on a penny. See, you, you ain't, you ain't been, never been poor before. Because you said a quarter. You, so I, broke folks know what a penny looks like. It's Abraham Lincoln, right on there like this. If anybody argues that to you, go to John 14. And Philip says, Philip says this, since you leave in us, show us the Father and we straight. We ain't got no problem. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also. But Philip says, since you leaving, show us the Father. And I love this. Jesus says, I didn't look this up in the Greek, but I imagine that Jesus probably had an attitude. Jesus said, have I? Hold on. I've been with y'all for how long? Have I been with you so long, with you, and yet, Philip, Phil, Philip, you don't know me? Jesus says what? Go to the next one. He that have seen me have seen the. So how you gonna say that, Philip? Show us the Father. Philip, I'm disappointed in you, Philip. You still don't get it. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16 says, go there, go there for me. Did I pull it up? Colossians, yes, yes, yes. It says, in whom we have redemption through his what? Even the forgiveness of who is the what? The invisible God. Jesus, so when you want to see God, you see Jesus. I'm not going to go there and say, you know, the pictures that you, you know, some of y'all have on y'all walls, you know, you know, with the, uh, with the perm in his hair and the blue eyes. And he's, uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I could go there. I could go there, but I'm not going to go there. But you got to know who you worship. And you got to know who Jesus is. And the reason why we, we went through this and we talked to this, because I'm hearing more and more of people saying Jesus cannot be God or Jesus can't be the son of God. That he can only be a great prophet. And then we sit there like this and we kind of just kind of, you know, twiddle our fingers because we don't know what scriptures to go to. We don't know what to say. We just say he died. He got up early Sunday morning. He's resurrected for our sin. But can you take them through the scriptures that's going to lead you there? Elder Nicole, can we? 
And Nicole said, can't. Yeah, we can't. So three sonships, what are they? Eternity past, present, and forever. Gracious, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us, Lord, like only you can. We thank you, Father God in heaven, Lord, that we can come into this place and not always have a preached moment, but Father in heaven, Lord, that you can teach us from your word. And Father in heaven, we pray, Lord, that what we have gained tonight, Lord Jesus, that we won't take it and hold it to ourselves, but that whomever you place in front of us and you place this word upon our lips, we will give it to them, Lord Jesus, and we will be just that much more prepared for your soon return. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come into this place, Lord Jesus, on tonight. Thank you for every uh, brother, every sister that has joined. Thank you for everyone that is watching online, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father in heaven, as we leave this place, that we don't leave from your presence, but that we continue to walk with you, talk with you, that you will take us back to our home safely, that even when we log off, Lord Jesus, we will continue to walk with you and talk with you every step of the way. And we'll be certain and sure to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise because we love him. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Amen and amen again. Amen. And have a good night, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you all for coming out to our church on Wednesday on tonight. Blessings, everyone.